How's it going, Bat Brain? Nice place you got here. I think my Joker would have liked it. Kind of place he would have picked. Here's your relook at the Play Arts Kai. This is the Batman Arkham Knight, number four, Harley Quinn. Yes, Harley's looking to steal the spotlight in a second helping review. The first time we had a look at the Play Arts Kai Arkham Knight number four Harley Quinn was back in February 21st, 2016. Now, one thing I wasn't able to do the first time we had a look at this Harley Quinn was to give you guys how tall the figure stands. This is more than something I can rectify now with the use of my trusty tape measure. I'm going to take the tape measure right to the very top of what I feel is her head. Now, these Play Arts Kai figures are generally quite tall, and the proof is in the pudding. Harley Quinn stands 9.7 inches in height, and that in centimeters works out to be 24.7, a little over 24.5 centimeters tall. Mmm, pudding. I'd like to send also a big thank you to Colin over on Facebook. He had actually asked me if I still had this figure in my collection, and if I did, would I consider doing another review? So, this is for you, Colin. We're going to have a look at the figure's accessories. This would normally have been a time where I would have showcased also the display stand that came included with the figure, but since the point A being the first time we had a look at this figure four years ago, and now point B, where we're looking at this figure right now, somewhere in that stretch of time, I've lost the stand. I don't know where it is. It probably has ended up in some bin somewhere, and I, I don't know where it is. So we're going to go ahead and resume the review without the display stand, but it, she would have come with like a hexagonal base with an adjustable curved neck. If I can eventually find it, maybe I'll do a follow-up on this video. I, I don't really know. Let's have a look at the figure's accessories, though. The first thing we'll have a look at, though, is she comes included with her pistol. The pistol is done in a two-color effect with a little bit of silver up at the top there. The handle is all black with more of the gunmetal gray being utilized as the primary coloring for the majority of the gun. She does also have a corresponding hand. I'm not really sure if I'm going to show the hand for each accessory, but I'll most definitely show you the accessory for hand holding the pistol. Uh, you just have to take the pistol and wedge it, wedge it down into her hand. Um, I do notice it's extremely tight, and it's even tighter when you try to get it out of her hand. The trigger finger does fit in there, but gosh darn it, you do have a real tough time of trying to remove it. And while you are doing it, I'm worried that it's going to clip the finger, the pointer finger, and break that off in the process. I don't see stress marks, but I just want to be very, very careful. As I said, it's really, really a tight fit to get that into her hand. By the way, check that off your checklist box. She comes with one interchangeable hand, and we'll have a look at those other interchangeable hands right now. Currently in the sockets of her forearm, she's got a pair of relaxed hands, but then she's also got a dynamic gestured hand. She's got a hand, this is kind of cool, for holding her police cap, and she also has a hand for holding her baseball bat, which would be a perfect now segue to segue ourselves in to the other accessory, the larger weapon accessory that comes included with the figure, she comes included with her bat. The bat is a very different interpretation of the bat she normally would have. Gone is wood, and instead favoring something more of like a metal bat, with still the candy striping of the alternating, now red and silver. As you can see, some additional kind of slotted grooves on the other side, painted all in black. And like I said, it's a really interesting looking bat, a departure from what she normally would have from like, you know, the comics and whatnot. The bat I have a real struggle time getting it actually into her hand. Um, you really have to kind of pry the fingers away from one another and wedge it. The culprit really is, is this thumb right here. I mean, not that I would say that thumbs on human beings are really nuisances, because you need those thumbs after all. But in the case of Harley Quinn, it is really problematic to get that bat into her hand. And like I said, you sort of have to uncomfortably, there it is right there, wedge it underneath her thumb and then kind of feed it through her hand like that. 
I mean, the trade-off, though, is it's not going anywhere. So, I mean, that's good. But it's just, I don't like having to fit it. See the shape of her thumb. And you can then imagine the difficult time I have experienced trying to get that bat wedged in its way. It sort of still sits loose, a little bit tighter the further you go up the, the bat handle. But I probably will just keep it in her hand for the rest of this review because then ultimately I'm probably in final looks going to display her with the bat. And I just gave it away. Just ruined the whole thing. Producer Tony, who wasn't here, by the way, four years ago. Yeah, Tony, I, I remember how long you've been in this company of ours. Let's have a look at the other accessories she comes included with. She comes with a, a pair of pigtails, though a bit uh, far from home, if you will, because they really haven't been attached to anything just yet. Just yet. We'll uh, have a look at that also in a second. And she does also come with the police cap, as you can see there with the, the bull badge on the top there. It's really got some nice paint details. And really, to the credit of Play Arts Kai, that I don't even think are really producing figures much of anything anymore, really. I mean, uh, I know they're sort of in a branch off from Square Enix, but Play Arts Kai, really, from a figure producing standpoint, I don't think they're doing as much as they did back in the day. Uh, certainly, I want to award them, if I can, something for the fact that they, they really do do these fantastic paint jobs on even figures as old as Harley Quinn here. I mean, get a gander at the airbrushing done to the center section, while the darker areas around the hat are more of a dark navy, almost even borderlining black. It's really got some neat looking coloring to it. And I'll show you how that works comes into play also in a second. Uh, we'll have a look at, maybe we'll have a look at the figure's head portrait. And then I'll show you the alternate head portrait and then we'll kind of show how things come together. Defaulted, or I suppose either figure head portrait could have been defaulted. I, I don't really remember now. I think it would have been this one right here. And of course would have involved then swapping it out for what I think is kind of the cooler looking head portrait, honestly. But the one that you get out of the packaging isn't really all that bad at all. It's a nice representation of Harley Quinn. This particular design of Harley Quinn wasn't something that appealed to me initially, but sort of grew on me the longer I saw her in different figures and, of course, gameplay of her in, in the actual Arkham, uh, Arkham Knight game. Really get some fantastic uh, design choices for Harley Quinn, but it still sort of feels very much like what Harley would wear. Just a little bit of a, like a di different interpretation, if you will. The head sculpt, though, like I said, is really quite pretty. The eyes have a slight bit of a reflective surface to them, slight semi-coat sheen. She's got a little bit of uh, slightly more rosier colors on her cheeks with an otherwise very chalk-like skin. Of course, the rest of her body doesn't have that. It's a little bit lighter right here, drawing your attention, of course, to the chest section of Harley Quinn. And of course, she's got lighter pale skin in the arms there as well. As I said, there are two different options for head portraits. Get a gander at this one. This one's got sass. And I always appreciate a Harley that has some additional sass to it. This is preferably the one I like displaying the figure with, although in honest truth bef between you and me, don't tell anybody else, I haven't displayed this figure for the longest time. But it sort of allowed me the opportunity when you guys, uh, like, for example, a Colin, I believe, Colin had reached out to me and had asked me on Facebook if I would consider re-reviewing this figure. Gave me the opportunity, first and foremost, to kind of go through my collection find some of the stuff I completely forgot about, and then also kind of give me a bit of a resurgence, I suppose, with the way I loved these figures so much back in the day. Now that I see Harley Quinn and I have her out of the box, I'm kind of experiencing the figure again. I could almost even imagine myself probably displaying her now, likely with this head portrait, I think. You can see how the two, side to side, there's not too much different. The placement of her eyes is a little bit higher up on this one versus the defaulted. Of course, the smile is a little bit different. This one is, I don't understand if she's actually just making a pouty face or if she's almost looking like she wants to stick her tongue out. It's slightly sultry. It's slightly playful. It's a really cool looking head portrait nonetheless. Before we go to that one though, uh, this particular head, she does have posability on the pigtails sections here, where you can actually move these back and forth. I like the coloring where it's slightly darker here of a darker yellow, and it gets progressively more lighter yellow as you make its way across kind of what looks like a ball of yarn, doesn't it? Looks a little bit like a ball of yarn. 
But what you can do is not only can you pose these back and forth, but you can also pop these off and you can replace them with these ones here. And again, they just sort of fit in place. Now, the thing about this one is I don't like the fact that they sit the way that they do. It looks weird really on this particular figure. Uh, they don't really belong with this one because this one has the additional posability on the pigtails. So again, I don't really know why you would want sort of gives you the wet hair look. We'll peg the other one in place and you can see what I'm talking about. Just plug that in like that. I mean, again, it's really for the hat, I suppose, if you want to display her with the hat. I think for that, you actually have to remove the front bangs here. There we go. Let's not remove her face completely. Let's just pick up the face piece. <laughs> her face is falling apart. And then we'll just replace the face back into place. That also uh, plays into a couple of things you can also do with this particular figure as well. There we go. You can get the hat going on top of her head. Kind of really, I guess, the intended purpose of having the hair hanging down the sides like that. But the hair doesn't, the hat doesn't really sit as far down as it should. I mean, the intended purpose is more so for her holding in her hand. But again, you've got this little draping hair on the side. It looks sort of a little awkward for me. The face plates are removable which is again, something that if you decide you wanna swap out the face to this one, you can change out both the hair, you can change out both the face. The only thing it doesn't seem like you can change is these. I thought if anything, you could pop these off, but really for the fact that you can change this, for the fact that you can change out her bangs, I mean, really everything else would be staying the same on this one. It's the same effect that if you, you know, obviously switch the pigtails over. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, we'll pop the head off the ball joint, just like that. A very nice, easy to unpeg. And we'll just replace it with what I feel is the more desired head portrait, like this one right here. And again, if you wanted to, drop the face in the process, but you can pull the bangs off, just like that. Slide those off, pop the head off, and you can most definitely replace it with the older, the first head that we had to look at. And you can also change, like I said, the hair as well. So if you want to have the hair slightly off to the side, you can pull that off. Or if you want to have the, the hair more kind of draped forward, you can also pull off that look as well. But we're going to go ahead, after all it's said and done, we're going to take the bangs off. There we go. Take the faceplate off. There we go. And replace it back to my favorite of the batch. And uh, by the way, if you want to just slide the bangs in place, it's just this little extended piece, the tab, and it literally just fits right in this open whole chasm in the top of her head and just slides it in place like that. Ah, what a fantastic looking head. By far my favorite of the two. And though it's a bit strange to be holding it in my hand, there's the other head portrait so you guys can see side to side. Yeah, I do like this one a lot more. You can really see the additional coloring now that I've pulled the faceplate off. It's, again, a bit unsettling that I'm holding Harley's face in between my finger and thumb. You can see how that's connected all into place. Now, going back to this hat, were we just talking about the hat? We were talking about the hat. What you can also do, we'll go back to this hand right here. We'll unpeg this, just take that, slide it off from the peg slide the proper hand that we want to go with in, instead here. And you can bend the hand. You can probably see where this is going. You can take the rim of the hat and you can fit it in between her finger, her fingers, I should say, and her thumb. And try in the process not to drop the hat. This is the problem when you do the videos right on the edge of the table. Let's go ahead and fit that into her hand. There we go. And you can fit that on her head, just like so. And there we go, dropping the hat again. Let's get that back in place. You probably can see from the two times I've now done this that it's not the most secure fit. There's very little that it actually fits in place. There we go. And oh, I just dropped that. I just dropped the hat again. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. Anyways, you can see how she holds the hat in her hand. 
But one thing that disappoints me slightly about this figure still now, the second time that we've looked at it, is because she doesn't have double hinges in her elbows. What I would like to pull off, and probably the reason why I keep dropping the hat, is I'd like to have the hat, have the hat slightly lower on her head. So she's kind of looking like this. And then just have the hand lined up. But because I can't get a full bend, a secondary hinge would have been so crucial, I think, to pull this off. I can't get the hand to quite line everything up. If I get the hand to touch the hat, then that's where it lifts the hat off the head and ultimately pops it off again for me to go and retrieve it. So again, unfortunately, it's a shame that the hands weren't placed in such a way or the elbows weren't placed with a double hinge so you could actually pull off, still having her hold the rim of the hat while it's still attached to her head, kind of, kind of like that but you're not really able to pull that off just with the single hinge that's available at your disposal. Before we drop this one last time, I'm gonna put this down and just move it to the side so we're not gonna run the risk of having that happen. I really certainly wanna look at the rest of the figure. Can't spend this entire review continuing to pick up a hat that keeps falling on the floor. For the rest of the figure, like I said, I really like that head portrait. This is by far my favorite of the batch. This head, once you add it to this back section of this head, also allows you to get some additional posability. Now, it's a bit ridiculous. I mean, you're not likely going to be displaying Harley with her pigtails out like this, but it does show you what you're capable of pulling off for the fact that this one does actually have it. I thought, again, you could pull these off and replace it with the other head, with the other head, but again, like because you can change the bangs, you can change out the face. I mean, you're really pulling off the exact same effect. You really don't then have to then worry about pulling these ones off. So I like that there's some additional posability there. Obviously, you're gonna see that it does look a bit out of place. Obviously, it's painted similar to the hair, but it does look like there's some big noticeable peg joints there. It's not really anything you can do about it. For the rest of Harley's outfit, of course, it's the more corseted, opened section of her top that she has in the game uh, Batman Arkham Knight. I personally, again, like the design. I really did kind of like the design of Nurse Harley as well from Batman uh, Arkham Asylum. I thought that was a really neat, and this is sort of kind of an extension out from that. You would imagine this would be the next look that Harley would go with. It still has very familiar Harley colors, the black and the alternating red, though some areas like the front of her corset top here isn't actually black. It's closer to being more blue. You get more traditional black on the sleeves, and most definitely you get that also in her skirt, but then it's back to tried and true blue and red again in the legs and both the red and the uh, the blue on this side right here. Even though it is technically blue, I like that they've added some additional airbrushing of black on top of it, so it just adds a little bit of more low light colors, so it's not solely just all navy. Of course, you've got the more decoed, Familiar sights for Harley Quinn, those diamonds on both sides, and they are raised from the surface of the plastic as well as the raised silver is also not just painted in place. I like that. Then we get down to Harley's boots. I really, I've always liked when Harley is sporting, uh, not quite sneakers, they're more kind of like boots than anything else, military boots, and you can see again, they're alternating in blue as they are on the red on this side right here. We'll just remove that hair. You got the laces sculpted on both sides with some very small details, like for example, the eyelets here for the uh, laces, as well as the little rivet points, they're all painted in silver. So there's a lot of really cool details put into this piece for such a older figure. I keep wanting not to say older figure because the figure's not super old, but I mean, if you've collected the Play Arts Kai, there was definitely like that period of time that Play Arts Kai was producing, like I said, a lot of stuff. And uh, since then, I really haven't seen anything surfacing from them. It's not to say that they aren't still producing figures, but I don't feel like I'm seeing them in the comic book stores as what I did. Anything I'm seeing now in the comic book stores is basically old figures that they just have not yet sold. I've kind of considered going back and picking up some of those. I really do regret giving, getting rid of a lot of my Play Arts Kai figures. There were some that I really liked, like, for example, the Poison Ivy. I kick myself that I sold that one. I wish I could have actually gotten her again. But I really like, there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of cool stuff happening with this Harley. Um, 
Obviously, the one thing with a lot of Play Arts Kai figures is people have uh, expressed over the years the problems with joints breaking. I mean, knock on wood, I haven't had any issues just yet with Harley Quinn, nor... Now, I guess right now I only have like three figures. I have the Kratos, I have Catwoman, and then I've got, uh, of course, uh, Harley Quinn here. None of them, knock on wood, have had any issues with their pegs. That's not to say that it's not problematic. Um, a couple of people have had real issues with like the Dark Knight figures, like Bane, for example. I think I had a lot of real notable problems with his joints being broken on the figure. But again, like I said, knock on wood, I haven't had any issues with this Harley. I really would feel pretty upset if something was to break on her. Probably shouldn't be jinxing things by saying that. So let's have a look at the figure's articulation. Her head rotates back and forth. And not only, this is kind of interesting the way that they've done this. Not only do you have the ball joint on the actual head portion, where you can move it up and down, rock it back and forth, and you can move it back and forth this way. We've already had a look at this. She has articulation in the pigtails. But if you look at the torso... This is kind of clever the way that they've done this. There's a secondary neg a neck peg right there where you can move the neck forward and back. But the way they've done it, they've lined up the ring, as you can see there, from the top of her shirt. It doesn't actually connect. You see that? It's a separate piece. But when you look at it this way, you feel like it should all be one piece. It's really clever, again, the way that they've done that. The shoulders hinge out, not quite at a 90 degree angle, a little less than that. Uh, you can move the arms forward, you can move the arms back. She does also have uh, the crunching, kind of a shoulder crunch where you can move those sleeves slightly more forward in as well. The elbows bend and you get with that a nice ratcheted joint. You can hear that, hear that? Boom, boom, boom. Oh, that's so satisfying to hear that. And you can also rotate the forearm. You can rotate the hands all the way around, whatever hands you decide to go with. She has an upper torso ball joint. She normally would have a waist swivel. It's sort of concealed underneath her dress. Don't look perverts. Uh, her legs are on a ratcheted joint. You can move those out. You can move them forward. You can move them back. She has a swivel basically where that thigh attaches to the top peg. She has a single hinge on the knee. And uh, you can't quite really rotate those. And then she also has a ratcheted joint in her feet as a testament, really, of these figures. And she also has toe articulation on uh, these toes, but really, really stiff on these boots. I don't know over the period of time that I've just had her stored away that the f feet articulation, the foot articulation has become a little tight, but she does have toe articulation. I just can't, I just can't move it right now. I mean, these, these are really good figures. Um, at the at the time when they were really a popular thing, I was collecting all of them. Basically, Batman related more so was kind of my bread and butter. As I said, I had a whole bunch of them back in the time. Well, I mean, you you could see for yourself if you check out some of my earlier reviews of these figures. I had a whole bunch of them at one given point. It's one of those things where, once again, buyer's remorse. I sold them. I don't know why I did it. I regretted it almost the moment I did it. Um, luckily, Harley Quinn was something I sat on the back burner. I thought to myself, maybe not sell, sell her just yet. Because if I do sell her, I might actually regret it. I actually had that thought, that thought process when I was ready to put her in the box of things I was going to be selling. I took Harley out immediately. I put her to the side. And I'm really, really glad that I did. I kind of wish I would have had that same mindset with some of the other figures, like, for example, Poison Ivy, who I regret selling ever since. Sadly, for the Play Arts Kai line, it's been a line of figures that have been all but forgotten in the minds of many collectors. Now the shelves of premium, quote-unquote, premium higher-end figures are sort of being occupied by SH Figure Arts and the Figma-based figures. But back in the day, the Play Arts Kai was some of the best stuff that you could find in comic book stores. They asked for a higher price, yes. But the trade-off was that you were getting figures that towered over some of the other ones in your collection. They had a lot of cool accessories, and they were very articulated figures. The trade-off, unfortunately, for some of that is that collectors experienced problems with some of their Play Arts Kai figures where they had broken limbs. I hear really problematic were the shoulders. Luckily, Harley Quinn doesn't have that problem. Knock on wood so far. I sadly sold pretty much all of my Play Arts Kai pieces. The only one, again, I kept was Kratos from God of War. I know he's here somewhere. The Catwoman, who was a little bit smaller. And, of course, here, Harley Quinn, who I think, for me, is the best of the bunch. 
The only thing that would have made this figure just that little bit better, just that little bit better, is she could have actually had double hinges in her elbows. And I know that's not really the MO, the calling card of Play Arts Kai. Generally, they were just single hinged ratcheted joints in the elbows. But gosh darn it, if she could have only possessed a double hinge on the elbow, I would have liked, actually liked to be able to have the hat still sitting low on her head with her hand still pinching around the front of the rim. Unfortunately, you can't pull that off. And as you probably saw in this review repeatedly, it resulted in the hat going pew, maybe not making that noise, but flying across the room and me having to pick it up off the floor. Okay, it wasn't across the room, but you get the idea. You get the idea. A really neat looking figure. Really super poseable, which is good. Nothing broken on this figure, which is again super good. And a lot of cool paint applications, which is again some of the best stuff that Play Arts Kai was doing back in the day. It's just a shame that I don't really see much of anything coming from Play Arts Kai anymore. I don't even really know what they are doing nowadays, other than of course Square Enix, which of course, you know, they're heavily into the game market. I don't really think they're doing much anymore in a way of figure lines. Correct me if I'm wrong, if that's the case. But what do you guys think of the Batman Arkham Knight Play Arts Kai figure number four, Harley Quinn? Definitely one of my favorite Harley Quinn pieces. I ask myself right now here in Final Looks, why did I even put this away in the first place? She unfortunately does have a stand missing, so I guess I'll have to begin my pursuits, my hunt, looking around my various storage bins and see hopefully if I can find that stand so I can actually display her in the way that she's intended. But luckily she does have nice flat footing. So right now, and it doesn't seem to be the issue where I feel like the figure is gonna fall over. Again, I'm really happy that I had this one still in my collection. I'm really happy actually that Colin over on Facebook asked me if I could re-review this figure. More than happy to oblige. If there is something that uh, you guys have seen me review in the past and maybe would like to get a double dipping of that, a second helping if you will, let me know down below in the comments section which figure you'd like to see me re-review. If I still have it and I have not sold it and of course regretted it later, seems to be the case with everything I've sold off. If I still have it, most definitely a re-review of this, of whatever figure you have in mind will be coming soon to this channel. So let me know down below in the comment section what you guys would like to see for a re-review of something that you've seen me review in the past. If you are new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Maybe you are new to this channel where you never saw the first review of the Arkham Knight Play Arts Kai Harley Quinn. If that's the case, maybe just stay away from some of that older video content I was putting out there. Eh, it's... It's not as good. I'm not as proud of some of that older stuff. But certainly keep your peepers peeled because we're going to be re-reviewing a lot of the pieces that I had looked at in the past and, of course, a whole bunch of newer stuff coming your way. So there's lots for your peepers to get peeled over. That doesn't sound very good. But anyways, guys, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.